Okay, so hello everyone. Today we are going to take a look at our alternator. So this video is in connection with the previous video I made with regard to how to identify engine noise. So I suggest you watch that one first, okay? Now when it comes to diagnosing our alternator, the very first thing that we would want to do is to check our battery voltage. And the best way to do that is to leave the battery be for at least overnight. That way we'll get rid of surface charge and we'll have a more accurate reading, okay? I'll show you what surface charge is, okay? Okay, so this vehicle along with this battery has not been started for at least a day now and we will now check its battery voltage, okay? Okay, so a good battery should have a voltage reading of somewhere between 12.4 to 12.6 volts, okay? So we have a battery reading of 12.6 volts. So we have a good battery. Okay, so now I will show you the difference when it comes to checking your battery voltage immediately after you turn off the engine, okay? So we'll check our battery voltage now. And it's giving us a reading of 13 volts. Now, that might lead you to believe that you have an overcharged battery, but that is not necessarily so. That is only surface charge. So that is why you need to leave the battery B for at least overnight in order to get rid of surface charge or if you want to speed up the process, turn on your lights and your, your audio system, okay? Okay, so let's go back to this vehicle. And on this battery, we're only getting a reading of 12.2 volts. And this is a bit weak, eh? but that is not very alarming. What we really do not want to see is 12 volts down below 11 volts, okay? If that is the case, we have a weak battery. However, if you get a reading of 12 volts below to 9 volts, then not only do you have a weak battery, but you have a worn out battery. And in most cases, you're going to have to replace that battery. So the next thing that we'll do now is to turn on our engine and let's see if our alternator is putting out a charge and we're not getting a reading actually it's below 12.2 so we're only getting a reading of 11.7 volts so there's no output from the alternator because if the alternator is working we should see a reading of somewhere between 13.5 volts to at least 15 volts okay however if you're going to get a reading of more than 15 volts to 16 volts then you have a problem with your alternator that is overcharging your battery and that is dangerous it might lead to uh, your battery exploding okay however if your ba alternator is only also putting out 13.5 below then your alternator is only putting out a low charge, okay? But we'll check some more. Now we will make sure if our alternator is not really putting out any battery voltage, okay? So we're going to remove this cover. This right here is called the B-Pose of the alternator. This is connected towards your battery via fuse, okay? So I'm going to leave the negative probe on the negative terminal of the battery. And this one, I will stick it here, okay? And then we will check the reading. So, we are getting a reading of 11.9. Uh, so basically our alternator is not really putting out anything. So the next thing that we're going to do is to rev our engine up to 2000 to 2500 RPM. Okay? And let's see if our voltage increases. Okay, so as you have seen, there was no difference, there was no increase in the output of the voltage of the alternator. So the next thing that we'll do is make sure that our fuse is in good condition. Okay. Now this terminal right here is the one that I was talking to you about earlier, which is directly connected to our B post on the alternator. Okay. I'm going to show you a confirmatory test. 
I'll put this multimeter on my continuity test, okay? I'll have this test probe right here. It doesn't necessarily matter. It doesn't matter if, if it's red or black. Uh, we're just going to check for continuity. And should there be continuity in the circuit, meaning the line is not broken, this should beep, and it is. So from here to there, okay? Now on this panel right here, we have a series of fuse. Let me take the cover out. And we will check to see if we have a blown out fuse. In this case, there's none. There's none on the other side as well. We will confirm that we visual inspection with our continuity test. Okay. Everything is continuous on the other side as well. Okay. So, no blown fuse, okay? Now one last continuity test should be, and it is, so we don't have a blown fuse. We have continuity from here to the alternator, okay? It should be, and it is. Now you might also want to check this series of fuse right here one by one. And in order for you to help pull this, they were kind enough to provide us this. This comes with the fuse box, okay? Now this helps you pull the fuse one by one. Now what you really want to see is, you see that uh, sort of A shape, it should be connected. Now in order to fully test that, do so with a continuity test, okay? See? Now check one by one, okay? So I've checked all this already and everything is in order, no problem there. Okay, so another test that we can perform before we consider removing the alternator is to check if this harness is putting out the uh, signal required by the alternator to function. So the way we're going to test that is we're going to use this, but use this, but before we're going to use this, we're going to perform if this thing indeed functions, okay? So now let's go on the alternator side. Now, I'm going to connect the ground here, okay? Okay, so this is for the sensor, this is for the ignition, and this is for the lamp. The lamp, I mean the battery icon that you see that lights up on your dashboard, and this goes to your ECU. This should light up when the ignition switch is off, I mean the key is off, okay, so it does. And should we turn on the ignition switch, this should light up, okay? Okay, so let's turn on the ignition switch. So it's on. Okay, so this should light up. This is the ignition, and it does. So this, again, this is for the lamp, so we don't need to check that one. It works if the alternator works. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to check if how much voltage this put out, puts out, okay? So it's putting out 12.2 volts. Same with battery voltage, okay? So now we can say that there's nothing wrong with our bat I mean the wirings of our vehicle. There's nothing wrong with the battery. There's nothing wrong with our fuse. So it has something to do with our alternator itself. Now before we go into remove this, let's perform a few more checks. Now usually when your alternator whines so loudly, it's usually caused by a mechanical noise from a worn out pulley or bearing inside the alternator or a bad diode problem okay and that is electrical noise one simple way of checking for electrical noise produced by the alternator is you need to start your in engine while this is plugged and should this whine ever so loudly and then when you remove it it stops then you have electrical noise and in most cases that is by reason of a bad diode problem okay now, before we're going to conduct a diode test, I will try to briefly explain to you what a diode is, okay? Okay, so basically a diode is an electrical component that allows current to go one way, but it does not allow it to go back, okay? Similar to a check valve. And this is the diode icon. See? You see that there? That is the diode icon, okay? Now, like I've said, a diode is similar to a check valve like this, 
On my air compressor, it allows air to go inside the tank, but it does not allow the air to go back outside again. Similar to a check valve on your water lines, okay? Now, to illustrate further what a diode is, I have this LED flashlight right here, okay? Now, why am I showing you this? Because LED stands for light emitting diode. Now that is what LED, LED stands for, okay? That is why in your LED flashlight, the polarity of your battery okay, will only work one way. However, if you go into reverse, the polarity, it is okay, not going to work. So like I've said, a LED or a diode is a one-way valve. In our alternator, we have a series of diodes. And the reason being is that an alternator okay, generally produces AC current. Pardon my handwriting. Now, the diode's purpose is to convert this AC current into DC current or DC 12 volts. Okay? Okay, so now I will show you how a diode test can be performed on our alternator while it's still mounted on the engine. We need to disconnect this as well as this B post, okay? It is imperative that we need to do this. Otherwise, you're going to have incorrect results. So before I will remove that B post, I will disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. That way, we're not going to short anything out. Okay, so we're going to remove this cover for convenience. Then we can now safely remove the B post. Okay. Okay, so now that is off the alternator, we can conduct our diode test. Okay, so now we have the multimeter ready. It's on our diode test. And what we are looking for, should we connect this black or negative probe to this ground or the body of the alternator, we should get a reading of somewhere about 0.5 volts. So we're getting a result of 0.4, that's okay. The result is going to vary uh, with regard to the amperage of your alternator, okay? Now, if we're going to reverse that polarity, we should not see any reading. In this case, there is none. So we do not have a diode problem. However, if you're going to see a reading on this part, when you reverse the polarity, you have a diode problem, okay? This way, we have a reading. This way, we should not have a reading. Like I've said, a diode is a one-way valve. Okay, so the one last thing that we are going to do before we pull out the alternator is to check our pulley. Actually, I've already done this in the previous video. I'll show it to you again, okay? So I'm going to put markings on this just so I can show you a much better view. Okay? Now, this is a two-piece pulley, okay? Should I rotate this, this right here is directly, directly connected to the shaft of the rotor of the alternator, okay? Watch the fins inside the alternator should I spin this. I'll spin this clockwise and it should spin freely, okay? Now, however, should I turn this, okay, counterclockwise, it should not spin. It should, this part of the pulley should lock itself onto this pulley that is being driven by the serpentine valve. In this case, I can turn it. Now, I can say that I have a worn out clutch pulley of the alternator. Because as this pulley, okay, the silver part pulley is going to be driven by the serpentine belt, clockwise, this should spin along with this. This is 
this design is for efficiency purposes that way should you rev the engine up to 3000 or 4000 rpm or maybe higher this will increase in speed however if you're going to release the gas pedal the rpm of the engine is going to go down but this will be allowed to spring freely and the rpm of this alternator is not going to be dropped as soon as the rpm of the engine is decreased it's similar to how a bicycle sprocket works okay like i've said in my previous video if you pedal forward the power from your pedaling is going to uh, be transferred to the rear sprocket of the bicycle thus turning the wheel however if you're going to pedal backwards then there's no power so now all in all we are sure that we have a problem with our alternator primarily with the clutch pulley assembly of the alternator so i'm going to remove this and let's take a closer look